Hey, Head Squeezers. First up, please excuse the facial fuzz. Um, I'm in the bustling city of Kathmandu in Nepal right now. I've had an amazing month trekking all the way up to Everest Base Camp, and we made a pact that we'd be going au naturel for the whole of the trip. So uh, you've got me with a beard this week. Um, Mr. James May is also offline. He's hung up his Do Not Disturb sign on his cellar door again. Um, I think he's actually trying to work out that magic elixir of a hangoverless beer. We'll see what he comes up with. I've um, got some fantastic questions in there this week. Thanks very much. Um, we're going to be looking at whether humans could fly. Uh, does your hair really go grey under stress? And finally, what's going on with the mystery of a sleeping arm in the morning? So the first one comes in from Christian Van Ristel and he asks, is it possible for humans to ever be able to fly? Now, Christian, the obviously state the bleeding obvious answer is just jump in a plane. Uh, but I'm reckoning that what you want to know is, is it possible for us to fly like a bird? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Birds have the advantage, obviously, of, of course, having very streamlined feathered wings. But the thing is, they've also got a few other advantages. They are very, very light. You see, they've got air sacs. They've got hollow bones made of crisscrossing structures. And they've also got a very light pointed beak rather than a heavy jawbone. Not only that, but they're also very, very strong. They have strong pectoral muscles. In fact, their pec muscles can be over 30% of their body mass. So birds are quite literally the lean, mean fighting machine. They're both strong and they're light. Humans, on the other hand, we are just too darn big. We are never going to get over the strength to weight ratio problem. However, I'm a kid of the 80s, and that means that I still firmly believe in my hero, Marty McFly and the hoverboard. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, if you're also keeping up the faith, give us a like, give us a thumbs up below if you're waiting for that hoverboard moment so we can fly in some sort of way. So the next one comes in from Twitter, from at Cicely Wright, who says, does stress cause the premature greying of a person's hair? Well, this is a really good question. And first of all, we need to know why hair has a colour at all. Now, each head has, on average, hundreds, thousands of different hair follicles. Now, it's the keratinocyte cells that produce the keratin protein that our hair is made up of. And before each one of those hair follicles pokes up through the scalp to see the light of day, it gets injected with a bit of melanin, and that's what gives it the colour. But as we get older, our melanin levels decrease, and that eventually leaves us with snow white hair. Well, that's if we have any left at all, I guess. Um, we've all seen those photos of prime ministers and presidents. They go into office with lovely dark brown hair and they come out of office um, very, very gray. Is it down to stress? Well, no, it's actually just down to age because 50% of 50 year olds are halfway towards a full head of gray hair. And we start getting gray hairs roughly when we're about 30 or 35. So. Sorry, Cicely, there is in fact no scientific evidence to suggest that stress causes grey hair. But if you do want to know whether you're going to get any or how many you're going to get, have a look at your parents and your grandparents because it's all down to genes. The last one comes in from Facebook, posted by MyHacks209, who asks, why do our legs or hands fall asleep? Now, you all know that feeling. You wake up in the morning and you've been asleep on your arm and it just feels like a... A, a, a lifeless bag of bones and flesh. What on earth is going on? Well, throughout our body, we have nerves and they are running from our brain to all the different parts of our organs. They're basically like telephone masts and telephone lines transmitting and relaying signals throughout the body. If you fall asleep on your arm, you put all your body weight, all your pressure on the arm and it has two effects. First, it stops the nerves actually transmitting the signal to where it needs to go. And secondly, it squashes the blood vessels and stops all the oxygen and nutrients getting to those nerves. The result is your brain sends a whole load of weird sensations that you feel as pins and needles. Now that unfortunately is all the time I've got this week. Uh, I need to head down into Kathmandu and find myself a barber to shave off this keratin forest that's growing on my chin. Uh, please do keep sending in your questions. We love receiving them. Um, post them down below in the video uh, or send us a tweet or send us a Facebook. However you want to get in touch, we will answer them very, very shortly. And until next time, happy head squeezing. Oh.